in this first video of a series, we're going to present a rare type of meteorite. This meteorite does not fit into any of the existing classes. It's not a stony meteorite. It's not a stony iron meteorite. It's not an iron nickel meteorite that makes up class three. This meteorite is primarily composed of titanium. Approximately 90% of its makeup is titanium. It was found in the upper desert near Redmond, or Oregon. It weighs 1,252 grams and it measures 65 millimeters tall, 76 millimeters wide and 125 millimeters long. The meteorite remains unclassified at this time simply because there is no official classification for a metal meteorite that is not composed of iron and nickel. This meteorite is made up of 89.7 titanium, 2% chromium, 6% iron, and 2% tin. It has trace amounts of nickel, copper, and zinc, as well as some other elements. Normally, and it has been the the current meteorite classification theory, meteorites, in order to be documented and proved as meteorites, they need to have entered the upper atmosphere from space, traveled through the atmosphere, and successfully hit the ground. They have to be natural objects, not man-made objects. We refer to man-made objects as space trash. The evidence on a traditional meteorite, an iron nickel meteorite, that helps us to identify that they did come through the atmosphere are certain thumbprints called regmaglyphs caused by surface melting in the as the meteor passes through the atmosphere they develop a fusion crust a hard crust on the outside this one this meteorite has no regmaglyphs it has no fusion crust. You can see it's it's pretty much bare metal on the majority of it. The, the parent body here. Iron meteorites develop rollover lips or rims as material is flowing 
melting from the from the front end and flowing down towards the tail end. Iron meteorites show signs of atmospheric melting, flowing of material, movement of material along the surface in a melted state. And there are flow lines on a traditional meteorite that are easy it makes it easy to identify the direction that the flow was traveling in and therefore the front of the meteorite the the nose the part that was headed into the atmosphere first and a traditional iron meteorite has ablation which is a loss of mass on the outside of the, the meteorite. It's, it's burned up or melted away. It's, it's abraded away as the meteorite is coming into the atmosphere. And because traditional iron meteorites heat up so much, the exterior of a traditional meteorite is burned up melted and as a result is free of sharp edges. Now this meteorite definitely does not qualify as an iron nickel meteorite based on its appearance. In fact based on its appearance my initial suspicion was that it was not a meteorite that it came from some other source but study over time has taken a number of years of examination and study to realize that though it is not an iron nickel meteorite it is, in fact, a meteorite. It is a natural piece that entered our atmosphere, traveled through that immense heat, and fell to the Earth. And it was picked up as a find, not fully understood when it was picked up, but it was unusual enough that it was an interesting piece to bring home. The find is covered from one end to the other in scratch marks, in impact marks, gouges, cuts, it has roughness to it where, where it, it almost looks like welding spatter. It has, it has layers on top of layers of, of impact. Some of the impacts are scraping impacts. This one in the middle is is actually planted down. It, it looks like a, something hit it and adhered. I've counted as many as ten different different layers of impacts on top of one another. And there's I suspect there's more than that. So in the next video, we're going to discuss why we think that this object is a titanium meteorite. Join us in part two.